Welcome to Wayne's Old Time Radio Page Channel. I'm Wayne, your host. These programs are brought to you by support of our listeners. You can give your support at Patreon or PayPal, either one. There's clickable links in the description below. Thanks for your support. Enjoy the shows. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. John? John, this is... Don't tell me. Harry Branson at Philadelphia Mutual. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, listen, John, I know you found his Amati violin. Are you sure? But Ricardo Amerigo himself, nothing. And after all, there's not only the $20,000 policy on him, but... What do you mean, am I sure? Are you sure it was Amerigo's Amati violin I found? Why, of course... What do you mean? What if it wasn't? What if it was just an imitation? John, stop it. That's impo... What do you mean? That $30,000 well-insured fiddle I picked up in the South Jersey swamps may be a phony. Oh, no. For heaven's sakes, come over here to the office and tell me... Oh, take it easy, Harold boy, until I've had time to find out a few things. John? See ya. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to the Philadelphia Mutual Liability and Casualty Company. Following is a final accounting of expenditures incurred during my investigation of the Ricardo Amerigo matter. When Ricardo Amerigo's car was hauled out of a swamp somewhere near Port Morris, New Jersey, there was no sign of his body. Only a sawed-through steering arm on the car that indicated somebody had done him dirt. However, I did find the fiddle. The $30,000 Amati that had helped him become one of the world's top concert violinists. Anyhow, with a fiddle under my arm, I ended up at the shop of violin maker Eric Snowden for final confirmation that it was the genuine Amati that I'd found. This Eric confirmed. However, while we were in the second floor workroom of his shop on Eisminger Street talking about the fiddle, somebody pounded on the street door downstairs. Oh, bother. I I'll be back in a moment, Mr. Dollar. And that's when I accidentally, and so help me it was accidental, I knocked open the door of a cabinet and discovered another violin, identical in every respect with the one I'd found in the swamp at the scene of Amerigo's accidental death. Okay, so I did exactly what you would have done. I put the one in the cabinet into Amerigo's case and the one from the case into the cabinet. One of them was the genuine Amati. But which one? He was so insistent, I thought he was one of my, uh, shall we say, better clients. As it turned out, it was just a youngster who wanted to see one of the new G-strings. A youngster? <laughs> oh, I see you're joking. But now, let me take this magnificent instrument, readjust the sound post and bridge so that... It no, will... no, wait, Mr. Snowden. Eh? Uh, it's later than I thought. There are some things I must do immediately. Suppose I come back here later. Very well. Meantime, I shall make the adjustments on the Amati to restore it. No, tone. no, I've got to take it with me. But I don't understand... There are a few things in this case I don't understand right this minute, but uh, I hope to before very long. Uh, Mr. Dolly, you talk in riddles. Why don't you leave the violin? No, thanks. Me? I'll see you later. Uh, but, but please be careful with it. If anything should happen to that priceless... Don't worry. Nothing will happen to it. I found that I'd almost spoken too soon, for I pounded down the stairs across the floor of the store and out of the door without the caution the book says one should exercise when leaving a suspect in a case. I'd no sooner got out on the street... It was a flower pot big enough to have killed a horse in its fall from the upper story window ledge. Oh, no. Good heavens, wait, Mr. Dollar. That was an accident. But I, I didn't wait. Me. Expense account item 14, 10 cents. Phone call to Harry Branson at the insurance company to have the police put a man on Eric Snowden's shop immediately to make sure he wouldn't try to skip. Item 15, 750 for a cab to the house of fiddle playing Jerry Goldsmith out in Lanark. Dollar. Hello, Goldsmith. I didn't expect it. But you left in rather a hurry earlier. Sorry, I had to keep a date. Hey, look, Jerry. When I was here before... You still have the violin? Yes. Yes, when I was here earlier and you played it, you didn't seem to think it was really Ricardo Amerigo's Amati. No, no, I, I didn't say that. At least Well, I... at least it didn't sound like it when you played it. Yes, Mr. Dollar, that's right. Oh, now, think a minute. 
You were a bit upset, excited, uh, whatever you want to call it, when I brought it to you. Yes, that's true. Nevertheless, and I, I think do. you were also afraid I might have suspected you of Amerigo's murder when you admitted his violin was the one thing you wanted more than anything else in life. Except, of course, to have Ricardo straighten out. Become himself again. Become the artist again. Deserve to have this... Oh, I don't know. Whatever I say seems to make it sound like a... I don't know. All right, now, look, Jerry, calm down, will you? I'm not trying to pin a murder rap on you. Calm down and do something for me, will you? Why, yes, of course. What? Here. Have you had something done to it to restore the tone it used to it have? It hasn't been touched by anyone else since I laid my hands on it. But I want you to play it again. Yes, of course I will. But didn't you say that some old fool with a music store cleaned it up? Jerry, it hasn't been touched by anyone else since I laid my hands on it. Now play it. All right. Go ahead, Jerry. It's, it's the Amati. A beautiful, wonderful... Funny. I never realized what a violin could... Can you hear me, Jerry? Yes. Yes. And to think it's taken something like this to lead me to a killer. Expense account item 16, 420. Cab to Philadelphia Mutual, the office of Harry Branson. But if you're right, John, you mustn't go out there alone. Don't you understand if he's the man who planned the murder of Ricardo Amerigo? He wouldn't stop... Yes, yes, I had the police put a man out there to cover his shop. But, John, I still think... It's Expense not... account item 17, $1.60. The buck was a tip for going through a couple of red lights. Back to the shop of the violin maker, Eric Snowden. Mr. Dollar. Hi, Mr. Snowden. I'm afraid I left you rather abruptly a while ago. You mentioned it, Mr. Dollar. It's you. I, that, that, that near accident when you left that flower pot, I, I don't know how it possibly could have shifted on the window ledge up there. On the third floor window ledge of this little combination store, workshop, and home of yours. That much I did notice while I was ducking it. If it had come off a second-floor window, you know I might have suspected you of giving it a helpful shove. Oh, good heavens, Mr. Dollar, you can't possibly mean that. All right, forget it, for the moment. Uh, but how can Let's you... go up to your workshop on the second floor. Come on. Well, well yes, of course. Uh, but uh, may I ask why? I want to show you something, and I think you know what. No, I certainly don't. Unless something has happened to the Amati. Oh, something certainly has. You damaged it since you were here. No such luck. Uh, Mr. Dollar, please, what are you talking about? Okay, here. Now, tell me the truth. Is this Ricardo Amerigo's Amati violin? Yes, yes, I've told you so. You're sure? Uh, of course I'm sure. You know something? You aren't, but I am. What? Now open that cabinet there beside your work table. What for? Because I tell you to. But, but I... Uh, just what are you getting at, Dollar? Are you going to open it or shall I? No. Get out of here. This is my shop, my place. You you can't do this sort of thing to me. Would you rather the police did? They're on their way. The police? But I... Well? There's no need to open it. Ricardo Amerigo Zamati is in it. Well, that's where you're wrong. This is the Amati, and this case... The one in the cabinet is the identical copy of the Amati that you made. Yes, Mr. Dollar. Why, Snowden? Because the loss of this priceless instrument would have been unthinkable. $30,000 insurance on it. Oh, money doesn't buy a violin like this. It must be played by an artist, by many artists, like the artist Ricardo was. So... So when Ricardo disappeared... Or was murdered? When Ricardo disappeared, I had to make sure that the Amati would, would still... I didn't murder him. Isn't this the hacksaw that cut the steering rod on his car? 
Well, Snowden, isn't it? Yes. Uh, no, I and mean... And because of it and your crazy plan to keep the real Amati, you and you alone are going to take the rap for Amerigo's murder. No, no, please. Ricky. Ricky. So you, sorry. That's right, Mr. Dollar. I'm Ricardo Amerigo. You're what? The dirty, drunken has-been that started all this. Sawed through the steering rod on my car, wrecked it in the swamp, left some of my clothing there. That phony fiddle was my idea. Not to collect the insurance on it, not that alone. But to make sure it could come back again. Be played again by somebody that deserved to play it. The way I... The way perhaps one time I deserved to play it. But, Ricardo... A man disappears, murder, or whatever. There's a fuss about it for a while, and it's over. But this, no. No, this must live. This violin. You will now. And the world will be the better for it. But you, and this apparent murder... The insurance was my last hope of paying back Pete Corbin, my agent, and the others who tried so hard to straighten me out. Pay back some of the money and the heartbreak they spent on me. Or let your insurance company pay them back. Because I never could. I couldn't even leave my hiding place here in Eric's house. Because I knew that sooner or later he'd pity me enough to give me more of the drink that's been all I've been living for. Eric, God bless him. Eric knew, of course. But only he. Be kind to him. If you can. Ricky. That's all, Mr. Dollar. Oh, unless... Will you buy me a drink before you call in the police? Expense account item 17, 850. One bottle of the best I could buy before I called in the police. Item 18, Hotel in Philadelphia, miscellaneous fare, back to Hartford. Total expense account, 182.65. Remarks? No insurance payment necessary on either the Amati or the man. And I guess he really was a man. More than he knew. What the courts will do about him and about Eric Snowden, well, the courts will do. And I'm glad I have to have no part in it. <laughs> you know, it's funny... Somehow I think I have a little better appreciation for music now than... Oh, well. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, there'll be another intriguing story for you beginning next Monday night. Next week, the Duke Red Matter. A racehorse that could only be stopped by a killer... And the killer didn't stop with horses. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Heard in the cast were Harry Bartell, Lawrence Dobkin, Victor Perrin, Barney Phillips, Forrest Lewis, Eric Snowden, Herb Vigran, and James McCallion. Musical supervisor and violinist, Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking.